the Christian New Testament took incredible liberties in their reading of the Hebrew scriptures in order to build their case that Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. And one of the most incredible misreadings of the Jewish Bible comes from the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 16. He writes the following. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. It does not say to his seeds, referring to many, but referring to one and to your seed. And this refers to Messiah. Now, there are three promises that the Almighty makes to Abraham in the beginning of the book of Genesis. And indeed, all of these promises God makes to Abraham and to his seed. The Hebrew word is Zerah. Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, God says to your seed, I will give this land. Later in Genesis chapter 13, verse 15, God says, for all the land that you see, I will give it to you and to your seed forever. And then finally, in Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, God says, I will give it to you and to your seed after you, again referring to the land of Israel. And actually, there's a fourth example. In Genesis 24, 7, God says, to your seed, I will give this land. Paul's approach basically is to insist that because the word seed is in the singular and not in the plural, it's not referring to all of Abraham's descendants. The promise, Paul insists, is to only one of Abraham's descendants, which Paul insists is Jesus, who he claims is the Messiah. Now, the problem with this reading on the behalf of Paul is that it totally misunderstands the Hebrew form. The Hebrew word zerah is in the singular. It means seed. The plural would be zra'im, seeds, if the, as if you were going to put zra'im, seeds, into the earth. The problem is that in the Hebrew Bible, whenever it describes someone's descendants, all of their descendants, it uses only the Hebrew word zera, seed. For example, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 16, the Torah says, And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can number the dust of the earth, then your seed can also be numbered. Obviously not speaking about one person, it's speaking about the enormity of the descendants of Abraham. And then also in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, And God said to Abram, Know for certain that your seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. Not a stranger in the land, but God says, plural, all of your descendants. They will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. And the truth is that this form, zera, seed, throughout the Hebrew Bible, the word zera or some form of zera occurs 228 times in the Hebrew Bible. And we never find, not even once, any references to the word zera in the plural form to say zra'im as referring to human descendants. It's interesting that this chapter in Galatians, chapter 3, the very end, Paul seems to do a flip-flop where he actually seems to realize this because the end of this chapter of Galatians, it says, and if you belong to the Messiah, Paul says, then you are Abraham's seed according to the promise. And so here, obviously, Paul believes that seed refers to all of the followers of Jesus, not just to one particular follower of Jesus. So again, in the proof that Paul tries to marshal on behalf of Jesus, he entirely misconstrues the meaning of the Hebrew word zera, seed, and claims that it only refers to one particular descendant of Abraham, which obviously goes against the entire meaning of the word zera in the Hebrew scriptures, always refers to the totality of a person's descendants.